Um, welcome back to the Scoopin' Report. I have an awesome Bigfoot encounter story for you all this evening, and I know you're gonna like it because it's scary. This one happened in the fall of 1985. It was September 24th in Crawford County, Arkansas. Arkansas. Uh, it was about four miles from this dude's house, uh, way out in the woods, up up in the mountain, um, near an old forest uh, observation tower. And he says, I'm still wondering if I should be telling this or not. I just don't know. It's hard for me to believe what happened to me and my buddy out off that old logging road in Cedarville, Arkansas, uh, located in Crawford County. My parents had just bought a home out there, and we had been there for about a year at this point, and uh, I had a real good knowledge of all the forest area around there. And as a 15-year-old boy, I loved going out into the woods and finding deer antlers and going on hikes up to the old forestry observation tower. And This particular Friday, I'd planned to take my tent, me and my buddy, we are going to go camping take a little food with us, and just go hang out and do some camping like we had done so many times before. Uh, we started our hike out to the uh, camping spot. It was me and my best friend, Chris. Uh, he was staying over at my house for the weekend to, to go camping with me. Um, we left right after he arrived. It was around 5 o'clock, and then we got to where we were going to camp around 7 o'clock that night. And... It was kind of brisk out, but not too cold or anything. And uh, I remember the moonlight was pretty bright. We could see fairly decent. And um, so we, when we got to high up on the mountain where we were going to camp, by the, it was a pretty long, hard, treacherous hike, uh, to be honest with you. And we got there and we set up our tents and we made a nice fire and started to cook some hot dogs when I needed to go to the bathroom. So, I went off into the woods to do nature's business, and shortly after digging a hole, I heard something being thrown through the branches. Um, now, this happened about four or five times, and I thought it was Chris clowning around. And I yelled to him, hey man, stop throwing stuff at me. And I heard him yell back, I'm not throwing anything at you, and quit playing games, because if you throw anything else at me, I'm really going to throw something at you. It didn't make any sense. I wasn't throwing anything at him. And I was pulling my pants back up right when I was hit with a stick about a inch in diameter and maybe a foot long. And it looked like it had, had been freshly twisted right off a tree branch, right off a tree. And I got back and I had the stick in my hand and I was going to hit Chris with it, you know, for hitting me. And he had, he had gotten into the tent and I said, come on out, man. And he said, I got in my tent because I was tired of getting hit with stuff you're throwing at me. And it just didn't make any sense. And it was not too long right after that we heard this long, low, grunting, burping sound. That, that it was it's hard to describe. They started out quiet, and they got a, a lot louder towards the end of each grunt. And I didn't know what it was, but it was getting louder each time. And it would make the noise three or four times and then stop. And then the sound of something being beaten on it reminded me of a baseball bat hit, hit up against the side of a tree, except really hard. And then we heard these thud sounds like it was hitting the ground with it. And then the grunting would start again. And by this time, me and Chris were scared half to death. Now, I had a twenty two rifle with me that my dad always made us take, you know, if it was just us kids camping in case of coyotes or something like that. And I got the twenty two out, and Chris got the light and shined it into the woods about 25 yards from us. There it was. This, it looked like a huge, tall man standing there beside a tree, just a dark, big figure. And as soon as the light hit his area, he ducked behind the tree. And we noticed with the light that he was huge. He had to be around eight feet tall. 
and was wearing what reminded me of like a ghillie suit that hunters wear. It was all covered with reddish brown fur, and I'll never forget the smell. It was awful. It was like uh, roadkill and wet dog all combined together. Uh, I didn't even dare use in the rifle because I knew that if you shot anything, you know, fairly large with a twenty-two, you're just going to piss it off. And you can't even drop a deer with a twenty-two, and this thing was way, way bigger than any deer I've, I'd ever seen, actually, or a bear in that area. Uh, the deer and bear in our area weren't that big, and as big as this thing was. And uh, me and Chris, we we backed up slowly. We we threw some water on the fire, and we was we we're still still hearing these grunts, but not the same sounding grunts. These were now more of a growling. Uh, ooh, ah, growling sound. And we finally turned, and using the light to keep us from breaking our necks, we ran as fast as we could. Uh, I hadn't been back there ha camping or hiking ever since, and this thing followed us. We could hear it f uh, running through the brush almost all the way back to the house. It, we were scared to death. I never I plan on going camping into any forests. I don't I, I don't want to uh, go into the woods or be near the woods. I just it just freaks me out. We moved away from Cedarville about two years later, and I haven't been back since, and I won't be for as long as I live. Uh, me and Chris don't even talk about that night. We both had nightmares for a long time about it. I know what I heard, smelled and saw, and I never want to see it again, ever. Now I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm fine without the forest and the trees. You'll never get me out there in them again, because I know what's in them. You'll have to drag me kicking and screaming. As far as I know, our tents and all our camping gear are still there to this day. And I don't want them. I don't want it back. I'm, I, I'm never going back there. Wow, it, it just, the, the old folks in the area used to, um, I remember they used to say, if you, you boys going camping, be careful because the big hairy man will get you. And I know that that's, I, we never took that seriously. It sounded like something all old people say to kids, you know, just poking fun. And we never talked about it after that. We didn't tell too many people or anything because, um, at least not there in those country people, uh, you would get laughed at. You'd just get laughed out of out of town. It, it would. It made no sense to even bother talking about it. And to this day, I have this irrational fear of the woods. And when we shine the light on that thing, we noticed the face and the eyes were so big. They looked. They reminded me of like black glossy pool balls, like uh, pool billiard balls. And, and the nose was kind of broad and flat. And uh, unlike a lot of other descriptions of Sasquatches, you'll hear this one's shoulders weren't as wide as you would think, given its height, you know. Um, the arms were super long compared to human proportions. These things hung down to his knees. Um, and like I said, it, it followed us almost all the way back to the house, scared to death. And... Uh, these old folks around here, they still, you know, have stories to this, to, to that. Well, up until we moved, you, you'd hear them talk, tell stories. And it's just, we know the truth. And there's a lot of truth in them stories. Uh, we, we never took them seriously, but uh, that's the encounter. And that, that's, that is something else, man. I, I tell you what, he was doing the right thing, digging a hole. Um, because that's right where I'd need to be if I saw one of them things walk up on me camping. <laughs> I would I would fill that hole up quick. Oh my goodness. Um, if you or anybody you know has had an encounter or, or seen a Bigfoot or had a sighting, shoot me an email at uh, skookumreport at gmail.com. That's skookumreport at gmail.com. And I'll get it up on the channel for you so everybody can hear, hear your encounter story. And uh, I love these Bigfoot stories and encounters. They're just awesome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And uh, leave a comment and let, let us know what y'all think of the channel. And if you have any ideas, um, just uh, hit, hit me up in the comments. 
All right, y'all. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I'll talk to you soon on the Scooping Report. Bye-bye, guys.